so putatively we're going to review trigonometry. I say putatively, um, well, for two reasons. First, I use the word review. I know a few people got special permission to enroll in this class without taking the trig prerequisite. Um, and the reason we allow that to happen is that we're actually going to use very little of the details that you learn in trigonometry in this class. Um, if you go on to take calculus two, there's a little more trig you'll have to learn. But in calculus one, I mean, we really just need to be aware that these functions called the trig functions exist. And we need to know, no, we don't even need to know this. It would be nice to know at least a little about them. I don't think it, I mean, it's in your video and stuff for um for tomorrow for thursday you could re probably really get away with not even knowing the basic definitions but let me say that there are two functions called the sine of x and the cosine of x let's start there. They're called the sine and the cosine. They're, when we're writing them in formulas, they're abbreviated sin and cos. And these functions are wave functions. And when I say wave functions, I'm not using fancy terminology or like talking about physics, wave and particle stuff. I'm saying that if you look at their graphs, their graphs look like waves. Here's the graph of the sine, the graph of the cosine also looks like a wave just moved to a slightly different part of the Cartesian plane. And if you know nothing more about the sine and the cosine than that they look like that, that's really all you need to know about the sine and the cosine for 99% of this course. So the sine and the cosine are used to define four other functions. So there are six trigonometric functions in total. Uh, of those six trigonometric functions, only four of them really matter for calculus. I mean, I'll briefly go through all of them. Um, the trig functions, other than the sine and the cosine, are all um, written as fractions. And I should write the full name in case 
this is totally new for anyone. Tan is short for tangent. So we've got the sine function, the cosine function, and the tangent function. And the sine and the cosine are the most important. The tangent is the next most important. Um, the tangent is not important for graphical reasons so much. I mean, you don't really need to know what the... Well, it's good to know that the tangent is sometimes undefined. The tangent has vertical asymptotes. And that's because the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine. So the cosine keeps being zero, and you can't divide by zero. So every time the cosine is zero, the tangent is undefined. Other than that, the details of the graph aren't really important. So, for a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people who see a trig, it's the sine, cosine, and tangent, and that's it. Like, in particular, I don't know Nebraska's high school curriculum. In Pennsylvania, you'd see these functions in high school geometry, but you just see the three that I put on the whiteboard just now. You'd see the sine, cosine, and tangent. So most high school grads would see those, but maybe not the other trig functions. from a calculus point of view. The next most important trig function is called the secant. And secant is abbreviated SEC. And the secant of x is defined in terms of the cosine. The secant is 1 divided by the cosine. And again, I mean, I don't want to sort of rush too far ahead. But the secant inherits its importance from the tangent. When we do calculus this with the tangent, secants appear. So because the tangent's pretty important, the secant ends up being pretty important. And the sine, cosine, tangent, secant form a self-contained group in the sense that if you take one of them and start doing trig functions with them, you'll end up with more sines, cosines, tangents, and secants. The other two trig functions won't appear if you start with one of these four. And that's why I say that these four are the really important ones. But just for completion, if nothing else, we have the sine and the cosine, the secant and the cosecant. And the cosecant, well, we've been using the first three letters, but Obviously, COS has already been used. That's the cosine. 
So the less important trig function is stuck with the different naming convention, CSC. Hmm. CSC, well, that's uh, the cosecant. And these naming conventions are, can be really confusing. It's, uh, I mean, there's nothing anyone can do about it at this point in time. But the cosecant is one divided by the sign. So, I mean, you'd think the cos would go together, right? You've got the cosine and the cosecant, but the cos don't go together. The secant gets the cosine, the cosecant gets the sine. And then you have, I mean, The cotangent, abbreviated cot, and the cotangent is the cosine over the sine, which is one divided by the tangent. So the cotangent and the tangent are related in this way. The cotangent is one over the tangent, but none of the other trig functions are related to their cofunction in that way. The cosine is not one divided by the sine, the cosecant is not one divided by the secant. So we have these strange naming conventions. They can be confusing when you see them for the first time. You've just kind of got to to live with it. They're centuries old. I don't think anyone's changing them because I don't like them. And um, this is enough trigonometry to do calculus with. Um, I'm still going to have you um, look at the 1.3 online material, just because if I ever use the phrase unit circle or right triangle trigonometry, even if you forget the details, I don't want it to be complete gibberish. I want you to have some idea what I'm talking about. But for the purposes of this class, for the purposes of this class, you should know what the sine and the cosine look like, that they're waves. You should know how the other trig functions are defined in terms of the sine and the cosine. And you should know that because all of these other trig functions have this division, um, they're not defined everywhere. All of them have values where there is division by zero errors, and there are vertical asymptotes as a result. I mean, I haven't shown the other, the graphs of the other trig functions. You don't really need to know them. But if we look at them real quick, the cotangent, has all of these vertical asymptotes. The secant has all of these vertical asymptotes. The cosecant has these vertical asymptotes. And the cotangent 
has these vertical asymptotes. So the sine and the cosine are special in, well, in a few ways. Um, they're special because they're defined everywhere, is what I was going to say. It's also very easy to imagine real world situations where the graphs look basically like this. I mean, if you look at the temperature over the course of a decade, it's not going to look exactly like this, but it will be hot in the summer, then cold in the winter, then hot in the summer, then cold in the winter. So we get these wave-like graphs. It's harder to imagine a situation where where you would get a graph like this. That's not what makes the secant important. But the sine and the cosine are important because so many real world situations do look basically like waves. So, uh, I have a new student, I think. I'll talk to you after class, the rest of you, if you can look at the uh, section 1.3 unit on Canvas, and if you can make sure to do the section 1.2 homework. Um, because I'll use that on Monday. Uh, on Monday, administration will ask which of your students are turning stuff in, and that's the only thing I'll have to go on. So if you can really make sure you get that done on time, I will see you on Monday.